Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Disney Dining Show. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Ms. Teresa Eccles. Hey. Mr. Stephen Porter. Hello. The newest member of our team, Mr. Sean Falk. Hey. And back in the production nook. Oh, we don't even have a camera set up for you people. You, you really just don't matter. Well, Rhino and Craig are back there, not <laughs> mattering. Um, Craig is hunched over his computer like he's watching porn. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. now there are hand gestures. Um, that's why we don't set the camera up back there. So, well, welcome to the show, everyone. This is our second episode of our Disney Dining Show. And although I said we were going to alternate between table service and counter service, uh, this week we're doing another table service. We did uh, um, Be Our Guest Restaurant a few weeks ago. But the next show is going to have a counter service. It's going to be Craig and Corey's review of uh, Cosmic Rays over at the Magic Kingdom. But um, before we get to any of that other stuff, we're going to start with just a couple of pieces of uh, news recently that I thought was was interesting. First and foremost, the My Disney Experience app uh, is now going to start tracking your dining uh, your dining credits from the Disney Dining Plan. Um, that's a pretty big update. Yeah, that's um, huge. People have been asking for this for a while, um, but you're also going to be able to view purchases. You're now able to view purchases that you've charged back to your hotel hmm. on the app, as well as renew eligible annual passes. My annual passes, my annual pass can't be renewed online because I have the Premier Pass, the Disneyland and Disney World Pass, but any other annual pass, now you can do that. But more and more, they are adding to this. Um, I know people have been asking about being able to track credits. This is awesome. This is I love the way it's evolving. And I, we kind of all knew it was going to, right? It had to just kind of keep adding more and more, and it's I love it. I'm surprised that Disney did this with both the the dining credits, but even more so with the tracking purchases, because if I were a business to be able to say, this is how much money you're spending, this is how much credits you've used, like it's almost like as a vacationer, I feel like some people might see, oh, like, like honey, like look at how much you spent on oh, you know, I hadn't thought of that. Or, or you know what I mean? Or, so wait, my husband can see now this that too? you're married, you're having those conversations, aren't you? Or, or just in general, <laughs> you could just see like, oh, like look, we've already spent half of our dining credits and it's only day three and we're here yeah, for- Yeah, that doesn't happen. Okay, unless you're gluttonous pigs, right. um, <laughs> or what? I, I mean, I'm just crawling from uh, restaurant so to restaurant. Yeah, I mean that's much... well, that's the big the big complaint with the Disney dining plan is that it's really difficult for anybody to eat that much food. Um, so that's one of the arguments against it. You'll hear a lot of people say, "I don't eat that much food," um, especially if you're getting just like the regular dining plan, or God forbid, the deluxe dining plan. Mm. Um, you know, there's no time for about, anything else. If you're really, just, you're, really yeah. you're just going from restaurant to restaurant. <laughs> um, so, but a lot of people end up leaving credits on the table, so to speak. Uh, no pun intended. Well, maybe, maybe just a little. Um, but so this is a way to kind of track that. And you see those people the last day of their vacation with all their mm-hmm. snack credits. Mm-hmm. They're in the hotel gift shop. They're buying like every bag of chips. I've and, done yeah. it. Candy. Yeah, no. Candy. Fruit, whatever. I've been yeah. that person like before I lived here and was a vacationer and everything. I mean, we did the, the dining plan like that. And at the end, I was like, oh, my God, I got to get like – Gifts for people, food gifts, you know, sort of like Rice Krispies to take home to people. I'm also realizing this is this is Sean's first show, so we should probably talk to you a little bit yeah, so sure. people like it get to know you. I just like <laughs> like here's someone new. Let's go on. Um, Sean is a friend of mine. We've known each other a while, and uh, just come on board. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I well, I work here now, and uh, <laughs> so I we've established I, that. Yes, yeah. Um, I live right in the Disney area. I always grew up coming to the parks. Um, I actually started at the California parks um, and then started coming here when I was about 16 with my family. Um, I loved it. That was why I moved to the area. So I wanted to continue that with Disney. Um, I did the college program and so I'm pretty familiar and well versed with the goings on at the parks. So knows his way around the parks. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Big fan. Big fan. So I'm glad to have you. Glad you could join us. Thank you. Um, 
But yeah, all right. So back to the, back to this. Um, just had to have that little, little like, segue there. Well, I'm just realizing. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, somebody new at the table. We should probably <laughs> introduce him a little bit better than here he is. Um, so um, yeah, I think a lot of people end up with credits on the table, and so this is a way to track it. And I wonder if Disney sees this being used to really utilize those credits because I mean that's good for Disney when they don't use them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they pull this off. Well, I think it'll be good because, especially if you have teenagers and you have the family splits up, the kids can see what credits they have left on their app. Yeah. And they don't have to keep asking mom and dad and just, you know, go off and use them up. And well, and I also think sometimes people get the receipt printed out just to see how many, like, to keep track of how many credits they have left. Um, and maybe it'll save some paper, too. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I think... First of all, this is something that should have always been on there. Like, I don't really like. They should have included this. They had trouble. They had trouble making it work at all. Right. right. (laughs) You know, for a while. To me, but like, because I used to wait tables at Disney, and it is the biggest hassle when you have to wait tables with for dining plan stuff. Because I mean, it takes an extra like. 10-15 10-15 minutes when and all you want to do is leave whenever you're done eating because so you can get back out in the park and stuff but you run into all these obstacles with the dining plan and all that so it's a huge headache especially for the servers for people that are waiting on it and all that so i'm glad it's kind of getting in a better direction there so well it's uh, you know they said when they released my disney experience and they went in this whole direction that they were going to keep evolving it and they have been they have been so we'll see See how people like it. Now, another story uh, revolves around the Edison, which is a new um, structure, uh, bar, lounge being built at Disney Springs. But there's also going to be a dining option. Steve has that. So it looks like Maria and Enzo uh, will be an Italian restaurant expected to come this fall to Disney Springs, the Edison. Um, and it's basically themed after an airport terminal, which is just an interesting, uh, it looks like a, a retro airport terminal. So um, it offers unique cuisine and immersion. That's basically, there's not a lot of info out there, but it all takes place in the Edison building, which is a power plant. So or electrical power, like it's what it's themed as. Yeah. yeah. So it's an interesting combination of the two. Um, and where is this at at Disney Springs? It is right on the water, um, next to like where the characters in flight is. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be. I mean, the building is beautiful. We have some pictures up on the site of um, construction updates of the photos. And I actually, when I was taking them, I was wondering why there's all these airplane. Uh, like billboard type pictures on the side of the building. And I was like, oh, I thought this was electrical themed. Um, so give some clarification as what's up over there. Well, they're, they're also behind behind schedule with this. This was oh, supposed yeah. to open this month. and Well, wasn't the it's... original one like spring and then it was summer and then it was fall? And now it just says late 2017. So at this point, who knows? Yeah, they're behind schedule with it. So we'll see when it opens. But I think adding an Italian eatery to the mm-hmm. offerings at Disney Springs, certainly not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Um, Lord knows they have really... They've really killed it down there. I mean, it's amazing. I'm so in love with Disney Springs. Well, and maybe if they do a really good job down there with the Italian food, you can say to maybe give them the menu to Tony's. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) now you're asking for the world. Um, Well, that'll actually give us two. Uh, uh, What was Portobello's? What's it now? Portobello's. Oh, it's going to be a Terralina, I think. Yeah. um, So that'll be one. Um, And then you've got... uh, uh, you've got this. So you've got two Italian eateries. Retro know. Airport Electric Company. Yeah. I was thinking the same I'm thing. I'm on board like, with that. I was I was thinking like, I don't know. Like, that's so confusing to have like this air, like eating in the terminal at an airport, which I don't think anyone likes to do. It's no one's favorite oh, place to go no, really like that, that much so where they're like, don't oh. Don't dash it down. They, uh, <laughs> so the, at the electric company with the Italian food, I'm like, it sounds confusing, but retro, it I'm could be really good retro. food. It's a weird conglomerate. The theme, theme is weird. Yeah. yeah. That different thing, but. As long as the food's good. Well, you know, care. so far, so far, they have they they've shown that they really good at theming these places. Oh yeah, no. and <laughs> making it work. So, I will absolutely reserve judgment on that until I see it. But it all sounds cool to me. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, nice to see that coming to uh, Disney Springs. 
So that's a little update on the news for this week. Um, we also like to do a featured discussion, something from um, our uh, restaurants board at disboards.com. And uh, this week I wanted to talk about uh, a thread uh, started by the Rusty Scupper called Buffet Character Shows and All You Care to Eat Pricing. Um, this amazing man has been, I'm assuming it's a man, um, has been maintaining this thread for at least four years. With all the pricing in one place that you can see, the first post in the thread, all the current pricing for every buffet character meal, buffet and character meal um, on property. And a lot of questions and discussions about um, you know, on, on the thread, I mean, the thread's like 20 some odd pages long. Um, but also, I just want to send out some good thoughts and wishes to the Rusty Scupper, who apparently is recovering from a pretty bad accident, but has still been managing, you know, there's been like intensive care. He's been in ICU at one point, and, wow. um, you know, there's been a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. So I want to send our best wishes out to you, um, and thank you for maintaining this thread. Um, but it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. There was one, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but Sean pointed this out to me. Um, somebody wanted to know what it was going to cost for her family to eat at a particular restaurant. And they said, well, the pricing's up there. Like, yeah, but I want to know how much it's going to, you know, cost for my entire family. Like, okay, get out a calculator and and figure out what the Do total the math. cost is. Do the math. Um, but, you know, a lot of comments going back and forth about these, these different meals. And you hear the same thing that, you know, uh, I've, I've certainly said it, and I, I know a lot of people feel this way. I think the best value right now for your money in terms of a buffet has got to be Trails End over at Fort Wilderness. Um, that, it's the same food they're serving in Hoopty Doo. So you're getting that fried chicken, the ribs, corn, but they also have like, their pizza's halfway decent. Um, you know, nice selection of vegetables, really decent salad bar, pulled pork, um, and the food is so good. That fried chicken's delicious. Yeah, it is. That fried you- chicken is delicious. The problem... I think the reason why the price, you know, it's, it's a really reasonable price. I didn't look up exactly. Maybe I should just, well, I don't have a link to it here. But um, really reasonable price. Maybe maybe my producer, if he can pull himself away from the porn, could look up what the current price of uh, of uh, Trails End is. Um, so you like it better than Tusker House? As a- I, I'm talking about value for dollar. Okay, okay. Um uh, no, I don't like it better than Tusker House. Okay. I, I like it a great deal. But no, I think Tusker House, in terms of buffets... Price aside. Price aside, okay. Tusker House wins. Okay. Tusker House, Boma, yeah. um, all right up there. Tusker House for a character meal, hands down. Yeah, right. Not even close. But even... Well, what I like about Tusker House is I'm not choosing between entertainment and food quality. I get both. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for the price you pay... At Trails End, and the f- the quality of the food you get, and just the whole experience, being at Fort Wilderness, which is yeah. really really cool. Yeah. That's a plus. And it's a you know, one of the you know, it's it's kind of difficult to get back there because if you're driving over to Fort Wilderness, you've got to like, you know, park and then take a bus to get back there. But what I tell a lot of people is, there's a boat that goes. Oh, if you're at the Magic Kingdom, definitely. you want to take a break. Hop the boat over to Fort Wilderness. Trails End is a very short walk from the marina. Go have a great meal in a great environment at a great price, and then head back into the park. What for dinner pricing? Sure. Um, Thirty-one ninety-five for slow time and peak thirty-six twenty-one. So between thirty-two and thirty-seven dollars, depending on time of year. Um, compare that to a lot of other buffets that are pushing $60 for adults. Um, so it's a really, really reasonable price point. Great food. 
And like I said, the atmosphere, everything. It's just, it's one of my favorite places to eat. But that's what this thread is all about. It's about discussing these various all-you-can-eat type, you know, whether it's character meals, buffets, uh, shows like Hoopty Doo, and, or, or experiences like Ohana, which is sort of family style. Everybody adding their, their thoughts um, and opinions. So um, do you have a favorite buffet? Um. Character meal? Uh, well, I, I like Crystal Palace as far as the character meals go. I think the and I like the buffet there too. Actually, it was really the dinner good. buffet so, was yeah, really the good. Yeah, the dinner buffet was great. So that's that's probably my my top pick. I haven't done Tusker House yet, so I'll have to do it and then weigh in. But for now, what about you, Tay? I like uh, for family style Liberty Tree. I just li- I like the atmosphere. He's smiling at Sean. <laughs> no, I just, I like the atmosphere. I like the, I don't. No, I like Liberty Tree too. It's just not, you know. I was looking like between the two of you. Like, I'm the, not family about style, happen, the family like, style, yeah. it's Ohana. Oh, definitely. Ohana. Definitely. I'm not a fan of characters bouncing around while I'm eating. I'm really, I mean, it's it's a nice option and I, it, you know, my clients She love likes it. to stay focused on the food. I'm focused <laughs> on my food. Don't distract me. And then it gets cold, and then I'm then Yeah, I'm but over. To just, you know, all you have to do to distract Teresa during a meal is just wave your keys around. It's something shiny. Um, oh, I passed that. I've moved on. No, but, you're not. <laughs> but no, I, uh, yeah, I, I like Liberty Tree. What about you, Steve? Um, I like Tusker House, and I you actually mentioned Boma. As a, that's yeah, probably, Boma's amazing. Boma's up there. It's one of my favorite buffets, so... Right. My two chop, uh, non or non character Boma character Tusker House, and we'll have a link to this thread and the news stories and everything else on our show notes page disunplugged.com. You can head out, head over there and check that out. Um, now we're going to get on to our featured dining review for this week. It is the Diamond Horseshoe. I keep calling it the Golden Horseshoe because that's what it is out in California, uh, but it's the Diamond Horseshoe here, and. Um, before we get into our overall thoughts on this experience, we're going to go ahead and let you watch the vlog that we recorded while we did it. Hey everybody, we are here at the Golden Horseshoe in the Magic Kingdom for their buffet dinner, or their family style dinner, I should say. So, um, and uh, Steve is uh, Steve Porter is uh, our video guy, uh, but joined by Miss Teresa Eccles over here. And my good friend Sean is joining us for this. Hi. Um, so as I said, this is Sir Family Style. Uh, they start out with a Frontier Salad, um, which is, uh, let's see, lettuce and tomatoes, uh, onions, roasted corn, uh, cornbread, cornbread croutons, and uh, Chipotle Ranch dressing. They also bring uh, plenty of cornbread with a honey butter. It's really good. Uh, but this is a northern cornbread, not a southern cornbread, so it's sweet cornbread. Um, and we just had our cornbread and salad. I really like the cornbread. The salad was okay. Um, the chipotle dressing, though, was a little spicier than I was expecting. And uh, everybody kind of noticed it really was tasted more like it should be a dip than a dressing. But it wasn't bad. What's the bad? Teresa, what would you think of the salad? Salad's okay. Basic salad, all the good stuff that you'd expect in a basic salad. I agree about the dressing. It, it's it's got a little bit more kick than, than I think everyone would, would like. It, I think it's, but it's good. I mean, we can maybe go with carrots or something in the dip. Yeah, I mean, I'll just echo what they said. It's I, I've never had cornbread like this because I'm from the south, so. It is like more on the sweet side. I really like it, actually. I didn't think I would, but it's really good. Um, I also don't like spicy at all, so the dressing is actually pretty good, though. I wouldn't go so far as to be like, oh, it's too spicy. Um, even as someone who doesn't like spicy, it's not so bad, but the rest of it is just like lettuce and carrots and stuff, like any other salad that you would have. So. So we um, just had our main course, which uh, again, sort of family style. 
a pulled pork, carved, uh, carved turkey breast, smoked sausage, and braised beef. Uh, they also serve what they call cowboy beans, which is baked beans, um, sauteed corn, and baked macaroni and cheese. I appear to be alone here at the table thinking this was really good. I thought the turkey was, I mean, it could some of it could have been hotter. The turkey was kind of cold, not cold, just room temperature. But it was moist, it wasn't dry. Um, the braised beef I thought was very good. Uh, the pulled pork was delicious. And the beans were good. Uh, the mac and cheese left a lot to be desired. But, Teresa, you don't agree with me. No, I don't. The mac and cheese was nasty. It was like lower than grocery store deli mac and cheese, and it was cold. The meats, I like the, um, the pulled pork was my favorite. The sausage was my second favorite, though. You could have that at breakfast, lunch, or dinner, that sausage. It was good, though. I didn't care for the pork and beans out of the can. I liked the... They were not out of the can. I liked the corn. It had a little bit of flavor. Um, they said that macaroni and cheese was baked. Where was it baked at and when? Because there was no crusty goodness on it, you know? Okay, whatever. Um, but no, I, I I would come back for the pulled pork and the corn if they could just serve me that. All right, Sean? Okay, I didn't like it. Um, I, I wouldn't eat... I, for, I don't like beans, first of all, so like I can't really comment on those. Um, I don't know what that's about, but um, yeah, the, the, the beans part? No, I don't like beans. No, I know what it's like. Converse with not like not recording. Um, they, uh, okay, so the turkey, it looked like it was going to be dry, but it actually was pretty good. Um, it wasn't dry at all. Um, it was just kind of basic in that way. For the price, it's one of those things where you expect a little bit extra. The braised pork, I mean, uh, braised beef was actually really good. I did like that part of it. Uh, the mac and cheese, that was pretty bad. That's something I was really looking forward to. And it was like school cafeteria kind of thing. So it was not, it wasn't up to that level that I'm expecting. So I would, would give it a no on, as a whole. Okay, so this meal was not good. Uh, <laughs> I didn't like the, I did, the pulled pork and the sausage were good. Everything else is horrible. The mac and cheese, like they said, people know me. People, uh, Craig and Rhino call me mac and cheese. This mac and cheese is horrible. Like like Sean said, it's worse than like cafeteria mac and cheese. So that was horrible. The beans were meh. The uh, braised beef was meh. Uh, it, the turkey was cold. Every, like the left side of our whole dish was cold. It's horrible. Uh, I would not pay thirty-five dollars for this. I wouldn't pay five dollars for this. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry for my first really scathing review, but that's what you get. Scathing. <laughs> okay. So for dessert, uh, we get a. Uh, big brownie in a skillet with, it's like a s'mores brownie. So it's got, it's a big brownie in a skillet with a chocolate sauce and the marshmallow and the graham cracker. This was really good, but very, 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 very rich and very, very sweet. What did you think, Teresa? When it first came out, I thought it was a steak with marshmallows on it. And it's good. It's, it was it was moist. Too rich to eat more than a couple of bites. So it was good. Not enough graham cracker. Yeah, it was. It actually was really good. I got a really small piece, but I'm like a dessert person. I love chocolate, all those kind of things. Uh, and it was, it was even rich for my taste. This was like Oprah Winfrey rich. Like this was some other kind of rich or whatever. And it was really good. Like you can get like two, three bites in. And I mean, th it's a good thing for like a, a group of like four or more people. Like there's enough food for everybody to eat. I mean, overall, I wouldn't spend the money necessarily to eat here, but and I wouldn't recommend it to people. But if this is your thing, then it's your thing, then go for it. So that's about it. Okay, so I did not like the main entree, meat platter, whatever that was. Um, the dessert was okay. I mean, it was s'mores and it was brownie, so they can't, it can't be horrible. I mean. Chocolate and marshmallow, you can't go wrong, but I'm not, it wasn't worth getting through the entree for this, so 
That's what I'll say. Okay, so um, as you could tell by watching the vlog, uh, we were not all of the same mind. As a matter of fact, the cheese stood alone in his opinions of this meal. I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I've, I've eaten there a couple of times. I liked it. You guys did not. Sean, you were pretty visceral about it. I no, I did not like it. At all. It's because of the money. Like it was because of the value for the money. Because like when you compare it, we were like you were just talking about how great of a meal you can have. Like getting on a boat, going over to Fort Wilderness, and doing that for thirty one dollars. And like this was about you know even more than that was or whatever. So like the food quality for that money. I mean, a family of four is going to spend almost two hundred dollars between their food and a tip and tax. And all that, and I'm like, God, I can't even imagine spending that kind of money on what we ate. Yeah, for me, it was just the, half of what was there was cold. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you can defend that. I'm sorry. And oh, look, at, you are getting right. Getting well, I'm ballsy mad because you were like, no, this is the best ever. And I'm like, I did not say it was the best ever. <laughs> okay, let's let's dial it back. You, no, you did say it was better than Liberty Tree. I fe yes, I agree. I, I feel that way. I feel that it is better than Liberty Tree Tavern. I prefer because I prefer the barbecue over the more traditional. So you're talking about all. the type of food is yes. what you like yeah, better. I lo I love barbecue, and I would have if this was plate pig versus uh, Liberty Tree. I like plate pig better, but this it, <laughs> bad barbecue is still bad. Okay, it wasn't presentation was really nice but it was cold it was cold. that's and it was like there was nothing but i will say the pulled pork was good the pulled pork was good and so was the little sausage things but the rest of it i i mean the canned pork and beans the mac and cheese off the cafeteria line yeah, that was the worst that which was cheese. cold Jesus. and i had yeah. when we walked in and we saw it sitting there i thought oh my but then now you realize we saw it sitting there, and that's probably the one we got yeah. 20 minutes later. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited about that macaroni and cheese because like, I had had the mac and cheese at Gico and like there. Yeah, well, come so, on. Now you I, cannot compare mac and cheese at Gico no. to mac and cheese. Oh, I know, but I'm just saying, like, park. then I'm like, okay, I know Disney can do this. The menu mac and did cheese. say like, baked. That was not well, baked. It was not baked mac and cheese. That was coming out of the big, awful, big yeah. pot. I can get better mac and cheese at Friar Nook. The Epcot Food and Wine mac and oh, cheese yeah. is so much better. There are so many good mac and cheese places on Disney. This is oh, mass yeah. production the though, noodle for those Germany people. Was was great, and it's like mass production kind of thing, and it's yeah. good baked macaroni and cheese. Yeah. So well, this is you know I, I know. you know I thought I thought the sausage was really good. I thought the pulled pulled pork was really was good. good. Um, the turkey, while it looked dry, it wasn't. I wish they would have served some some gravy with it with the turkey. Well, that would have been Liberty Tree, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> this I, is fun. I thought you know the mac and cheese left a little something to be desired. The um, corn was okay, like corn. Corn, yeah. <laughs> but overall, I thought it was very good. I thought it was tasty, and I enjoyed it. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, we were there during the Halloween party. Um, and, you know, so the option, you know, smart ass over here, of getting on a boat and going over. That was to, him. Um, yeah, that was me. Was that you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, whichever one I of you. In theory, like the. Getting on a boat and going over to uh, Fort Wilderness at that particular night mm -hmm. means I'm taking time away from something I just paid extra to be there right. for. Um, generally speaking, absolutely. It's a great, you know, if you need to get out of the park. But if you don't want to leave the park, I thought this was a good option. I, you know, I, I enjoyed it. Atmosphere was good. I thought the, our the server was really was good. good. Yes. I thought nice. the dessert was really good. The, 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 the s'mores brownie. Needed more s'more, s'moreness. There was more a graham cracker. You, more graham cracker. Uh, it was a brownie with a freaking graham cracker stuck in one side. There was graham cracker crumble on top with the marshmallow. Too much marshmallow. Um, it was good though. It was oh. really sweet. Well, okay, the other thing I have, like the other problem I have with this place is the potential that I see with it, and that if they had still did like a show on the stage, that'd be pretty cool. And like there, it feels like there's a lot left that could be done there that just isn't. Yeah. You know, normally, 
this is the uh, is the opposite. I normally don't, you know, somebody else likes it and I don't. Um, so I don't know. Maybe something's happening to me. I thought this was good. I thought, yes, I would like to, I think they could utilize that stage and put some entertainment up there. Cornbread was good. <clears throat> cornbread was good. Was Corn, more... The cornbread was a northern cornbread, which means it's sweet. Was it As, thicker cake like? Yeah, it was like you pound know. cake kind. Of. Yeah, it was, it was very thicker. sweet. It's it not the good. southern corn. And they yeah. brought out enough to fill us up, so when the disappointment came, <laughs> we were okay. With it. I will say I did not like the dessert at all. What I do you think of the, the salad dressing? I thought, I thought the dessert was like really rich, but I I didn't care for it. And even like I tried scraping each individual part of it like the marshmallow to try everything individually and especially the brownie when i put it in my mouth it turned into like paste or something like it just hung glue. like all, it was glue that was just all in the top glue. of my mouth it was it was really bad chocolate glue mm-hmm. there Hashtag chocolate, chocolate glue, glue. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. What do you think of the salad dressing? I thought it was bold for what it was because not everybody would like that little bit of kick. Yeah, had. there was this, that spicy salad dressing, which was not horrible, but it was like there could be definitely a lot of people that I enjoyed not it for them. But, but, I, it, but it I'm thinking, like a dip. but I'm, I'm I'm enjoying it, and I'm looking at, it and I I glanced over at Steve because I knew Steve was not a bold eater. Yeah. And I and you were eating. I it. ate it all. Um, you I had just, a look on your face, but you were eating it. Yeah, you know? it was yeah. interesting. What is this? It, yeah, it was not so horrible that I wasn't going to finish it. No, it wasn't was, horrible, but it, it would have been just, good with. It was very like with unique. carrot sticks. Yeah, or with, right. Yeah. Pepper sticks. I actually ended up really liking the dressing, and I I don't like spicy stuff. I can't. It's not even that I can't handle spicy stuff. Um, so for a, a normal person who enjoys spicy, they would be like, this has no spice at all. I don't know what you're talking <clears throat> right. about. For me, it did have a little bit of a kick, but I still ate it, and I thought it was actually a good flavor. Um, but there, I am surprised, like, for a lot of people with kids that, I mean, if you're coming for family dining, 99% of the time there's at least one kid in this group. So I was surprised that that was There was, was a lot the, of children That was there, the dressing But they might choice. not have been eating the salad because there was only three croutons on the salad for the four of us. <laughs> <laughs> so... That kind of threw me. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I thought I, I thought at thirty five dollars per person for this, as Disney buffets go, that this was reasonably priced, um, especially being in the park. Um, and I thought I, I I thought it was absolutely worth it. I thought it was absolutely oh, worth it. If you're on your once in every four year vacation. Is, are you going to stop here for a night in the Magic Kingdom, or are you going to? Are there other places that you'd rather pick? Um, are you excited to go back? I would absolutely go back. I would absolutely you know, go back. Take different people, though, probably. Wouldn't I would be. certainly not take any. <laughs> not taking any any of you ungrateful bitches. Um, but um, I, I I I don't know. I I yes, I would go back. And I thought our server was really nice. Oh, they were good. Yeah, yeah, she was great. Nice. Do you think right, it was, was a fluke great. that the food was chilly? That it wasn't hot? Okay, I mean, with the exception of the mac and cheese and the turkey, turkey could yeah. And the, the well, but turkey the beans listen, super, the beans are warm. I, I when you go to Liberty Tree, okay, since we're going to talk about that, the turkey comes out room temperature as well because you can't keep it hot. This you was, can't this keep was turkey. cold, though. This no, it was not. No, it was not. It was absolutely cheese. not. When you say cold, that implies that it not was the temperature deli. it would have been coming out of a refrigerator. Okay. It was room temperature. So that's not cold. It's okay. not hot. And I understand some people, and that's why, you know, let's be fair. If you've ever cooked a turkey, which you haven't, you know that when you oh. the minute you carve it, the minute you carve it, yes. it starts going to room it's temperature. Room temperature. When you, you, the way you heat up a piece of turkey is with the gravy. That's the that's my and that's my complaint. There is give me a side of hot gravy because that's how you heat up a piece of turkey. Um, unless you're gonna like nuke it and then like throw it on their plate. <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> Eat it quickly. It's not a meat that's going to hold. A, a, a very warm temperature for any length of time. There's no way for them okay, to get well, I can, turkey to your table hot. I can forgive the, the the meat thing is okay, but the mac and cheese being cold. I, right? you know, well, again, it was room temperature. Let's be. I, mean, I know it should have been hot. Mac it and cheese should have been, 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 been hot. So they don't have the same excuse there with that. But how about the sausage? I thought the sausage was okay, but it was like a breakfast sausage, which was weird. It was a smoked. 
It was a, it had a little it sweetness to it. Smoked sausage. Yeah. Um, it was a smoked sausage, and I thought it was good, very good, good. actually. I didn't care for that other thing that you had. What a big were you hunk looking of. for? Oh, the uh, you were looking for Italian yeah. sausage. I don't know. It just, uh, just I didn't like it. I didn't have a big hunk of that. I liked the braised beef. Did you? I, I, I thought it was really good, actually. And I mean, I totally get the thing with the turkey part of it. I'm just one of those people that I'm like, if I gotta take my family out for a two hundred dollar meal, then give me warm food. Like every all the food I get should be warm. So that's my thing. But Sprite was good and icy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought the beans were decent. They weren't the best beans I've ever had, but I thought they were okay. Um, I mean, it was, no, I don't know. It's like we had, it's like we had two different meals yeah, because yeah. we were all eating off the same family style thing. I liked um, the decor and stuff inside. Like it really mm-hmm. fit with the theme. It was like Mary Poppins decorated a saloon kind of thing. So like it was oh. like this Victorian mix with saloon stuff because like the front stage had like the gazebo looking thing like pillars and stuff or whatever up at the front. So it had that like uh, like a bar inside of like the dance Grand hall. Floridian Hotel yeah. kind of thing. Like it had like some combination of it, which I thought was cool. I thought it was neat. Yeah, so no, I really liked with, the. I like the venue a lot. Yeah, it fit with Frontierland and with Liberty Square. So, like, it kind of had a mix of both, and I liked that. So, so uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, let me just pull up the receipt here. Um, we I used uh, Tables in Wonderland, which saved me uh, $28 on this. Um, with the built-in 18% gratuity they put back in, $144 for four adults. Uh, for this meal um, in a theme park all you want to eat I don't think that's unreasonable I've paid a lot more and gotten worse um, my personal opinion I thought it was good I thought it was good these guys disagree that's just the way it is but I'm right and they're wrong oh um, my <laughs> I could hear the can opener back there opening up those cans of beans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I thought it was good. Okay. I thought it was good. Okay. Next time you come over to my house, I'll fix <laughs> Okay, yourself. well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go get a job there okay, making the that. beans, okay? <laughs> they just, um, I don't know. It was, like you said, location was worth the money, I think. Because it wasn't, like you said, it wasn't a $60 per person meal. No, it wasn't. We didn't have to go. We just had to, we were in where we were. We go in, we eat, and we come we right back out. We got seated right and away. We, we got right seated on time. All that was wonderful. And I would I would do it again, probably, just to see if it was a one-off with the, the Chili Mac, you know? Yeah, I mean, things weren't, like, prepared badly or anything. Like, even one of the things, like, even with the braised beef and uh, the pork and all that kind of stuff, it actually, like, it didn't have big fatty pieces. It mm-hmm. didn't have, like, it actually had good cuts of what right, was going yeah, on. Right, yeah, it so was. it was well made. It, like, a lot of it just ended up being cold. And I think when food gets cold, it just takes on this whole other taste and texture and everything for me. So mm-hmm. I'm a textures person. I don't know. I like yeah, I'm <laughs> Well, weird. a lot of I'm people weird. are. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of people, yeah. you know, texture matters. Yeah, texture was a big thing for me. So, so all right. Well, there you have it. That's our review of um, the Diamond Horseshoe at the Magic Kingdom. We have put a poll up on Facebook. We will have the results of that or your thoughts on the Diamond Horseshoe. Uh, we'll, have your, uh, we'll have the results on that on our next show. So that will do it for this episode of the Disney Dining Show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next time. Have a great week, everyone.